Great. So how did you get on with that challenge? This should be quite simple because we've already done it once for the left dice, but it's important that you understand how it all links together, which is why I wanted you to complete the challenge. The first thing that we need to do is we've got a variable that's tracking the value for our left dice number, and it's updating it when the button is pressed so that it can display a new image in that image widget. Now, in order to do the same for the right dice, we're going to need to create a new variable and we'll just call this right dice number because I'm not feeling too imaginative today. Now, once we've got our variable, then we can go about changing it to a random number when the flat button is pressed. Inside our on pressed, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say that our right dice number is going to equal to a number that's generated from a random number generator and the specific type of number we want to generate is an integer, so a whole number. And we're going to set the max to six, so we generate random numbers between zero and five, and then we'll just add one to any of those numbers to bring it up to one to six, which matches with the dice numbers that we have in our images. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to update the place where we use that right dice number. Instead of pulling up the images slash dice1.png, which is pretty much hard coded, it's always going to be the first image shown. We're going to delete that one and instead we're going to use a string interpolation to insert the right dice number inside there. And it's going to be inserted using that little dollar sign there that we saw previously. Now, all we have to do is to say that when the right dice number changes, we should update all the places where it's used. So in order to do that, we have to call that method called set state. And this simply says that this change in the right dice numbers value is going to need to trigger a rebuild of our stateful widget so that the parts where it's used can update on the screen. Let's hit save and for those changes to go through to our app and let's test it by, we already know the left side works and now if we click on the right side, it also works and it gives us all the numbers that we could possibly want. And we now have two separate dice that we can roll on our dice app. Now, what if we wanted both dice to change when one of the buttons is pressed? So what if I wanted both of these buttons to update when I click on any one of those buttons? Here is your challenge. Try and get this behavior in your app. So pause the video and try to complete this challenge. And I'll share with you the solution in the next lesson. All right, so we want to be able to change both dice images when we click on any one of the buttons. In order to do this, we need both the right dice number and the left dice number to update when we click on any one of these flat buttons. The simple solution is to generate a new number for our left dice number and right dice number whenever any of these buttons are pressed. All we need to do is simply copy the behavior that we have for the right dice number over here and we'll copy that line of code for the left dice number down here. So now whenever either of the buttons are pressed, we update the left dice number to a new random number, we update the right dice number into a new random number and we call set state on that to update the image on both of these places. Now when set state gets called, it sees that left dice number is used here and right dice number is used here and it will redraw both of these images. So let's give that a go. Let's hit save. And now when I click on the left side, the right side also changes. When I click on the right side, the left side also changes. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Now, in this last challenge for Dicey, I want you to use what you learned about functions or what you already know about functions to remove all of our repeated code because you can see we've got a lot of code that looks the same, right? How can you remove that and put it into a function 
so that you call the function instead when the buttons get pressed. So we don't have all of this code that looks identical to each other. Pause the video and I'll share the solution with you in the next lesson. We know that the simplest type of Dart functions look like this, where we have a keyword void at the beginning, we have the name of the function, we have a set of parentheses, which will keep empty, and then we have our curly braces. And inside these curly braces are all of the instructions that are repeated that we need to use in different places in our code. And when we want to call this function to activate it, we call it by its name, like so. Applying that to our code, let's go up here and create a new function. So we'll start off with the void keyword. We'll call it, you can call it anything you want, but let's call it change dice face. And I'm gonna add a set of empty parentheses. Now to complete building our function, all we need to add now are a set of curly braces. And it's inside these curly braces where we'll add the blocks of code which are repeated across our code, namely updating our left dice number and updating our right dice number. You can see that all of this is the same. So let's cut that out of the unpressed and let's paste it into our new function. And we can now, instead of having to write all those lines of code, we can simply call it by its name, which is change dice face. So now when our flat button gets pressed, the on press listener gets triggered and it looks to find this function with a name of change dice face. It finds it right here and it calls set state, changes the left dice number, changes the right dice number. So now we can put that in here as well and we're going to call change dice face down here too and now this code is no longer repeated in two places or maybe if you had more dice there would be more places that would be needed. Now, if you were wondering why we couldn't take out the expanded widget and the repeated flat button widget or the repeated on pressed, we're going to answer that in a few modules because we need to learn a bit more about widgets before we can do that. In the next lesson, I've got one final boss level challenge for you, and it's to build an app of your own. So once you're ready, head over there and be ready to face off the end of level boss. And I'll see you on the next module.